All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, AV guys. Dusty, thank you. Bless you. Thanks for worship. And in his absence, thank you to Pastor Jared. Um, glad he's getting a, I don't know if it's a vacation. Right? <laughs> and I guess he'll see this. So if you are, brother, you're in an area where there's good coffee. Get some good coffee up there. But um, I'm happy to be here. I was sitting in the truck outside and just praying, um, sharing with, with Dusty and his wife a minute ago. And I was just asking God, tell me about this congregation. Tell me about this body. Tell me about this church. And as I'm sitting out there going through Scripture, we're going to dive into Romans a little bit today. Romans 4 and Romans 5. God just said, look. And I'm looking and there's kids coming across. I say kids, young people, they get offended, which I don't really care about. But they're coming across. <laughs> they come across. And, and then I see... You know, this amazing man, I don't know, he's somewhere here parked next to me, and a mature gentleman. And God says, this is a well. So I want to bring that word. That wasn't a word I planned, but this is a well. This house is a well. And I'm from Africa. I know you boys here in the U.S. think you know what hunting is like, but <laughs> I, I understand. I feel for you. We hunt things that can eat us, Okay. All right, we're we're the we're we're the slowest in the field. <laughs> Things we hunt can eat us, but we know wells in Africa. We understand what it looks like when a farm is healthy, based on who's coming to the water, which animals come to the water, what time of day, and how does the circle of life work? And is there too many pride of lion on the territory? Too few? And what is the buck? And you just look at the well. You just look at who's coming to the well. And if there's no hippos at the well but crocodiles, it means something. But if there's crocs and hippos, it means something. How close the female line, all of it means something based on the water. What's happening at the water? So I want to bring you a word that's not really even the word. This is a well. And Jared, you'll see this if you're watching this live. This is a well. So I want you to understand the greatest danger you can ever be in is to not know who you are and not know where you're at. Any soldier will tell you, if I don't know who I am, if I don't have uniform, if I don't know who I'm fighting for, who's with me, and I don't know where I'm at, I'm exposed. So I'm telling you as a body, you're a well. You're right here. You know where you're at in this community. And I know you think it's big, but it's not. It's really small. So it's Ranger. Eastland, Cisco, this greater area of Texas, this is a well. So you've got to steward the well. You've got to take care of the well. And I know this great volunteer programs going on here, and people take care of it, but you have to walk that way. So that when you go to Slowpoke, which is my favorite restaurant now, and I can't even rem remember what city that's in, but it's here somewhere. Okay? If you go to Slowpoke, you get to talk about the well. You have to tell somebody in Africa, in the desert, when it gets 115 like here, hey, there's water. Just four clicks this way, the big oak tree, go over there, there's water. Why? Because I'm telling you they're thirsty. They're desperate. Our nation is desperate. Desperate. I would argue it's one of the most desperate nations I've seen in a very long time. Desperate for water, desperate for truth, desperate for sustenance. Our nation is on the brink. You can make this political if you want, and fr frankly, my dear, I don't give a rip. Okay, I'm just going to bring you truth. Our nation is on a brink of saying to God, take us back to Egypt. Can we just go back to Egypt? Because at least we knew, although enslaved, Pharaoh would put food on the table three times a day. Pharaoh would at least allow us to work the land and keep 10%. Christians historically, for as long as we can remember, wanted to go back to Egypt. Permanently, back to Egypt, back to Egypt. Wait a second, boys. I just brought manna. It rained meat. Let's be real. The Bible is practical. It's not a story. 
It's not a guy, a figment of your imagination, Santa Claus. No, it's a real man, fully God, fully man, was birthed from a virgin, a real birth. All the pain, woman. Her husband was so stupid, God had to make him blind for a minute. You know, <laughs> he couldn't speak for a minute. We know, we struggle. Give us grace, wives. But we were still made first. I'm just letting you know, <laughs> I didn't do it. God did it. We were still made first, so doesn't love us more, but we're important. <laughs> we have a role to play. It's not just laundry. No. We can't. You cannot live a life where you want to go back to Egypt. Yoko, what does that look like in reality? It looks like you saying, I'm, I'm dependent on fill in the blank. Anything that's not the king. Anything. Including the Constitution of the United States. I'm seeing a nation defend a constitution, which we should. I'm, I'm all constitution. I'm all God. But I'm telling you, there is a higher power. There's a higher authority. Not just supernatural, ethereal. No, tangibly in your life. With impact, there better be an understanding that the highest authority, the highest office, the highest document you're going to defend and protect is the Word of God, the throne of God, the Son of God that's seated at His right hand, the cross, the blood. It means something. If that's not the highest, hear me, and you take the Constitution and you put it above that, you're out of order. You're out of alignment, chiropractor. You're going to walk wonky. And things are going to break down, right? Doc, my knee is not your knee. It's your pelvis. No, the, the pain's not here, Doc. It's here. I studied sports medicine. Do you know the, the problem is never where you feel the pain. Hear me. The problem is never where you feel the pain. Standing here, I got some floating cartilage here. I'm not doing very well on my knee this morning. I was like, dang, I'm glad this. But it's not here. Something else is not right. I am out of alignment right now. We need to find out where's the real problem in your life. Where's it really? What's really going on? What's the real reason why you go, you know what, the pain so much is, take me back to Egypt. Can I, just, can I just forfeit my freedom? Can I forfeit my right to summons the king for myself? Can I forfeit the responsibility and the obligation of hearing his voice for myself? Can I just go back to Egypt where someone can just tell me what to do every day and I'll just follow like a sheep? And sure, I'm forfeiting my freedom. And sure, I'm forfeiting my future and my dreams and my hopes. And sure, I'm forfeit forfeiting the destiny that He created for me before I was crafted in the womb. Those are not my words. I just need somebody to take care of me. I just need a safety blanket. I just need a security net. Because it's a little more comfortable. And he looks at you this morning and he says, but, but, because my nation, my people, were exactly where you are today. And I realized they're literally going to march themselves back to Egypt. I had to send my son. I had to send my son to come walk amongst the Romans. I had to send my son to come face every single trial you faced. Name one thing you think you faced that Jesus didn't face. Oh, I mean, men say, well, Yaku, um, sexual immorality. No. Trust me, he was approached by it. Trust me, he was tempted with everything you've been tempted. Trust me, he had it on a silver platter. Trust me, when Satan elevated him and said, look at, look at the nations. Nations, Look. You have to understand, Satan and Jesus in the desert elevated. 
And Satan said, look at the nations. I'll give it to you. And he says, get behind me, Satan. I'm not going to Egypt. I have a promise that my dad spoke in my ear that I believe that he has something for me, that he's my provider, he's my caretaker, he's my, you know, my provision for everything I need. I'm going in that direction. I'm not going to take counterfeit. But we always want to go back to counterfeit. Because, Yaku, it's tough. Our nation is on the brink of you could, people, whatever, right? Our cities have burned already. It's tough, Yaku. I don't know. I feel helpless. Now, the pain you're feeling now in your personal life, the pain you're feeling as a state of Texas, the pain you're feeling as a city, as a well house here, the pain you're feeling as a nation is not where the problem's at. You, you, can't, you can't convince me otherwise. You want to talk race relations, Yaku? It's police brutality. It's not what the problem is. You could have 9,000 marches, burn every city down, and not a single life will change. Not one. Why? Because it's a heart issue. It's not a skin color issue. By the way, who picked the skin color when you were in the birth canal on your way out? Did you volunteer for your skin color? It's ridiculous conversation. Stop entertaining ridiculous conversations because that ridiculous conversation course redirects you to Egypt because that's where you end up in the name of equality under the banner of human rights under the banner of the Constitution First Amendment all that stuff under the law of God let's go back to the Word of God and understand that a couple boys and a couple girls got on a boat. God spoke to somebody's heart and said, Go to a land where you can worship me freely, where all men are equal. And go write a document based off my word. So the Constitution was drafted from the Word of God. It's subject to the Word of God. So don't tell me you want to defend the Constitution and you do not see a politician stand on stage and defend the Word of God. He's out of alignment. What architect will tell you, um, I built the house, then I drew up the plants? <laughs> hey, plumber, can you do the plumbing, then drew up the plans, and then get it certified? It's out of alignment. It doesn't work that way. Let's get back in alignment. Let's get back in understanding. The highest authority is speaking. Are you listening? Who are you listening to? Who's the loudest voice in your life right now? The voice calling you from Egypt? Whatever your Egypt is. Dusty is here somewhere. I think Dusty shares his testimony. So I don't want to. Where's Dusty's wife? She's here somewhere. Dusty, I don't. Uh, have you shared your testimony here? Okay. Dusty's Egypt is going to be somebody calling him from over here. Okay, bro. There's a little bit of Novocaine. We can call. We can numb the pain. You remember? Dusty, you remember? Husband and wife, Dusty, little rub, this young kids don't sleep, little agitated. Dusty, you remember? Remember old Johnny Walker? You remember your friend, opioid? You remember your friend, suicidal thought? You remember your friend, uh, the word divorce? That's your Egypt. Calling, calling, and, and we're just volunteering because it's a little more comfortable in Egypt. Think of the irrational to that. And enslaved people who's not able to worship their God, who cries out, if we could only worship God freely, if we could only go through our ritual of preparing our meal by blood sacrifice, to eat. If, if Pharaoh would only allow us to do that, we'd be so happy. God goes, you're free, you're out, they're chasing you, don't worry, I'll split the sea, you'll go through, they'll drown, you're free. Now let's go to the promised land, according to the promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
And they go, wait a minute, it's a little hot out here. <laughs> and uh, does this mean we have to farm now? Yeah. Does this mean I need to plow the land? Does this mean I need to pray for rain? Yeah. But don't worry, I'll bring you a fire by night and a cloud by day. Meat will fall out of the sky. You know, manna had never been seen in history. Ever. This is not a bird. Bread, manna, and, 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 the, and the meat that bird that falls out of the It had never been seen. He brought new food. I would argue... And I probably ask this question when I get to the gates and say, hey, what was in that bread exactly? Because there were some nutrients and vitamins and superfood in there to sustain them. Because it said it sustained them. But they want it back to Egypt. Because it's comfortable. Check your heart right now. I know you're following a lot of prophets at the moment and what's going to happen to our nation. And is Trump going to be in office? Is he out of office? Is it Biden? Is it Kamala Harris? It's what is happening? And we're grasping. We are literally grabbing to the voices of Egypt at the moment. And I'm not calling the prophets the voices of Egypt. No, we're in a season where the prophets better prophesy. The prophets better prophesy. The old man, you better dream. You better freaking dream. Sir. Your prayer tonight is, Jesus, Lord, I want to dream tonight. Show me your will for this nation. I want to dream tonight. Why? Because the Word of God says you're going to dream. Because we're in the latter days. The young men, you better pray for vision. You, what's your name? Caleb. Good night, dude. <laughs> Caleb. Do you, have you studied Caleb? Have you studied Caleb? So yes or no, it's simple. Don't be, don't be typical American and go gray. Yes or no. <laughs> it's like asking how many genders are there. It's two. <laughs> There's no gray area. Caleb, have you studied Caleb? No, you haven't. Okay, I'll answer for you. The next two weeks of your life, you're going to dive into the Word of God. You're going to ask your dad if he's here. If you don't have a dad, one of these men will father you in this church because they will. Dusty will go to Dusty. And I want you to study Caleb because your name means something. Because your mom thinks she named you Caleb. She did not. She had nothing to do with it. God decided that your name was Caleb. And you're going to learn a little bit about yourself, son. And a warrior is going to rise up. We don't know who we are. We don't. The only reason you'll go back to Egypt is in the middle of a trial. You can't find yourself. And you can't find God. And now your hope is in man. And it feels so good to be part of the conservative movement. And you're right, Ron, we're all here. And yes, the Constitution, the Constitution. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, hear me today. You better not serve the Constitution of the United States harder than you serve the King of Kings. You're out of line. You're going to end up in Egypt. God has a marriage for you that supersedes anything. How long have you been married as a couple, ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> I, I've got immediate empathy and sympathy for you. And I'm not a sympathetic person, okay? But my heart is weeping right now. <laughs> okay. 57 amazing years. Can you maybe, ma'am? With all that wisdom, because my, my grandfather said, Yaku, make sure you've got more older friends than younger friends. Learn from the gray and the wise. And it's the greatest advice I've ever gotten other than the word of God. M may I challenge you and go, this next year may be the best year in marriage of your life. Do you think it's possible? Okay. Because it is. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Not glory to valley. Every four years, this country goes, glory to valley, glory to valley, glory to valley. And so what did the rest of the world do? They go, that's difficult. We'd rather go to Egypt and sell out to a dictator and become a socialist nation and become a communist nation because it's easier. 
because I don't have to think for myself. I wake up, the government tells me how many kids I can have. I wake up, they tell me what job I'm going. I wake up like Hitler, he goes, two baby boys, they're twins. See which one's stronger, kill the other one. Keep this one. It's just easier. That's what you want? Take it. Go to Egypt. I'm not going with you. I'm going the other way. I'm going the way where when we sing worship songs like this, the heaven tears open. Anointing falls in a place called the well. I know that's not your name, but that's your name now. <laughs> and this water has sustenance in it. And when people come here, meaning when they meet you, because the, the church is not a place. So when Devin goes to Slowpoke, this body, this house, is supposed to walk into Slowpoke. So that the girl that served me banana pie yesterday has to meet Jesus. She's got to get water where she's at. Show me one time Jesus said, I'm going to stay here and bring the world to me. No, his own disciples said, we're not going in that city. You don't know. He's like, really? No, we're going there. You're not going to eat at Zacchaeus' house. Yes, I am. Why would you do that? Because he needs water. You take the gospel. You take what you eat here today to the world. You go tell them Egypt is a bad place. What's your Egypt? What's the natural fleshly calling in your life that just makes it a little easier? Is it porn? Is it porn? It's Egypt. Yaku, I can't believe you just spoke of porn in the church. Oh, I'll preach for the next seven hours just on porn. And then we can switch to race relations. And then we can switch to hate. And then we can switch to infidelity. And then we can switch to marital problems. And then we can switch to suicidal thoughts. And oh, then maybe we can come to the real issue. What is the core lie in your life? What is the root lie in your life? Because I will tell you, Satan built an Egypt in your life around your root lie. One lie. Do you know that for most, it happens before the age five? 57 years of marriage? I'm going to take you back to before when you were five, ma'am. And we better make sure that there's not a root lie in your life that you've come into agreement with that Satan can build an Egypt around. And he's just calling constantly. It's like freaking frozen number two. That voice, Elsa. I don't know what it is, but I'm hearing it. Let's go to the voice, to the black forest, to the dark forest. Elsa's going. Stupid. Stay in the castle, Elsa. Don't go to Egypt. <laughs> it's just calling you. And it never stops. And you put a suppressor on it. And you manage it. Oh, I can manage porn. Oh, I can manage the dysfunction of my marriage. Oh, I can manage lust. Oh, I can manage my addiction. To nobody. Oh, I can manage, I can put on a front and tell the world I'm set free. It's Jesus, it's Jesus. Oh, it's amazing. It's God, it's God, it's cool. No. No. He says, I have come to give you life and life abundantly. I've come to set you free from yourself. I've come to liberate you. I've come to strip you from any voice that's calling you to Egypt. I've come to strip you from any desire to get comfortable. Any desire to get comfortable. Yaku, come on, dude. Can we just all be the Wilkes family and just be a little more relaxed? No. No. I'm sorry. You might say, praise God, this guy was only here one day, and he's going back home. That's okay. I'll go to another city, and God will go liberate other people. But here's what's happening. You need to go to war. Sure, we have a war in our country, and you, you, you are in the spirit, and you are in the physical. I want you to pay more attention right now at the war you need to fight in your personal life. What is there in your personal life that you need to literally today in this room 
declare war over? What lie do we have to identify in your life to go see Jesus pull that lie out by its root and replace it with truth so that you course correct your whole life timeline? Because if you've given your heart to Jesus, you're safe. Congratulations. Now, I read the Bible on my phone. If you had a hard Bible, I'd say, please in the Bible find me the scripture that says, the purpose for your life is to get saved and just make it into heaven. It's not in there. Do you know what he says? Now go to the nations. Well, wait a minute. If I'm going to go to the nations and disciple the nations, it means I need to get saved first. And God goes, duh, yeah, that's obvious. My purpose is to expand my kingdom through you, not just get you in my house. So I'll challenge you tonight, this. If your whole life's goal was just to be saved and you are saved, well done. Then tonight, go and be with him. Because we don't need you here. You have no purpose here. If that's your finish line to be saved and be honest with yourself. Thank you for recognizing him as your king. But I got to replace you on the team. So you might as well go and be with the Lord tonight. Because tomorrow morning when I wake up, we need soldiers on the line, ready, willing, and able, volunteering, saying he's my king and I want to go to the nations, the nation of Ranger, the nation of Eastland, America's been so off for so long. Oh, my good Lord. We want to send missionaries around the world. And I go, we're dying right here. Please send some missionaries if they're called. But bring those back. Your heart needs to turn towards, I'm a vessel. I'm a weapon. I'm a son and a daughter of God to expand the kingdom of God. What does that look like, Yaku? Liberate people. Get people free from Egypt. Set them free. Yaku, I can't do anything. You're right, nor can I. I can't tie my shoes, which is they stay tied. I just slip my feet in. Okay? <laughs> I can't do anything. But I'm telling you, if I say, yes, Lord, he's going to set people free. He's going to heal marriages. He's going to take fathers and sons and bond them. He's going to give a young man, Caleb, a crazy South African, to come say, study Caleb. And I know that I know for a fact your life is changing this week. For a fact, because you're going to discover something from him, not me, in the Word of God, that's going to give you purpose. You've got to get a new vision, because the people without vision will perish, not struggle, die, wither up like a deer on the side of the road, the buzzard's eating you. You need vision. What's your vision? Where are you going? Look, I got a job. It's not a vision, that's a tool. What's the vision? It's like a carpenter telling me it's all about the bandsaw. No, it's not. What are you making? I'm making a table. Okay, the bandsaw is a tool. Where are you going? Your personal life. Yaku, I live in Ranger. Well, there's not much to do here. I'll challenge you, and I've done this before. I've taken, we've taken a whole congregation, a place called AMTC, and we said, hey, get in your car. Get in your car now. This happened at a Bible study. Let's drive a mile up and let's go into Walmart. Let's pray in the parking lot. This happened. God, what do you have to say and tell me who to talk to? And we sent about 30 people into a Walmart and they came out with testimony. Yaku, God told me to go to aisle 7. God told me there was going to be me. God told me there was going to be a pregnant mom and she's a single mom. I walk in and I go, God, I'm nuts, but I'm nuts for you. <laughs> nuts for you. You know what? I walk in, there's a pregnant mom on aisle seven. I go, maybe she'll be married. It'll be the wrong one. <laughs> I walk in, nope, she's single. She's single. I'm like, okay. God delivers a message. A woman drops what's in her hand. She shares that, hey, I wasn't only thinking of killing this baby in my womb, but I was just going to do a two for That's God. 
You know why? Because he cares about every single one of his children that he created. Dusty today, dusty when he was as high as he's ever been. No difference. He does not change. He can't. The word of God that he gives to us, he has to live by that word. He doesn't have a different set of rules. He can't go against his nature. He can't change his character. He can't leave you. He can't forsake you. He can't not hear your prayers. He can't not answer you. It's his nature to speak to his children. Yaku, I don't hear God. Well, he's speaking in your life. So we need to help you. We need to disciple you to get to a place where it's still enough in your life. You're far enough from the cry of Elsa in Egypt where it's quiet enough where you can hear his voice and get purpose and get realigned and get set free. Radical Christianity. Radical people is what I'm calling up in this country now. We need radical believers. Do not leave your house in the morning and put on your Christian badge. I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Oh, I, I can prove it to you. July 16, 2009, I was baptized. People saw it. Great, fantastic. Glad you, did, glad you didn't drown. What are you doing today? Oh, no, no, no. Today's tough, Yaku. Today I'm thinking about my mistakes from yesterday. Today I'm thinking about, you know, my name's Dusty and I used to be into drugs. Today I'm kind of heavy because Egypt's calling me. Today I'm disqualified. Okay? Let's be honest. Are you? Do you? When are you? Most likely, most of you in this room go, yeah, I'm pretty disqualified today. Who's disqualifying you again? Who? who? Who's disqualifying you? Don't you for one second dare to put that crap on Jesus. Uh-uh. Because we'll go. We'll take these glasses off and we will, f and we can go. Because I know where I go if you kick my tail. I go to heaven, so I might as well just go all the way. <laughs> you don't put that on Jesus. That's not him. That's Satan. That's the voice of the enemy saying, hey, 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 you're your judge. You're your judge. Hey, hey, why don't you judge yourself this morning so you can't look at the promised land. You look at Egypt. He looks at Paul and he says, yesterday is gone. I died for it. Tomorrow you don't, you don't own. He says, oh, man can say I make plans. But thus says the Lord, if it's the will of God, you've got today. You woke up this morning. You're alive. You're breathing. Hello, if you didn't know it. You've got a purpose today. When you leave this building today, you better go tell somebody that there's a well. You better go tell somebody that he pulled you out of Egypt. What does he say? They will know me when you can memorize all Scripture. No. They will know me when man declared you a pastor. No. They'll know me when you go to Baptist Theological Seminary. No. They'll know me by the word of your testimony. My testimony? Yep. Yeah. It's the best story you can tell. And it's truly the only authentic story you can tell. Why? Because you lived it. Because there's not a person on planet Earth that can convince Dusty that he was never addicted. Nobody. Why not? Because he lived it. So he can speak of it with conviction. People say, Yaku, how do you talk to a Muslim? You tell him what God's done for you. You don't argue. He knows the Quran better than you know the Bible. Trust me. It's beaten into them. But he's never heard God's voice. He's never given God credit for doing something for him. He's trained that he does for God. His whole doctrine and gospel is you earn your way to 40 virgins in heaven. He serves a God that takes. I serve a God that died for me. I serve a God that gave everything. I can tell him about, about a God that picked a 13-year-old boy off the street, this body, 
and put me back in my bed after a bus ran me over at 42 miles an hour as a pedestrian. I'm walking across the street. A bus hits me. You die when a bus hits you at 42 miles an hour. God said, no, I got a plan for this boy. Pick him up. And I could give you 70 of those stories in my life. So could you if you would just start giving him credit. So could you if you would just go through your life from age five and start saying, okay, let's find God in my life. Yep, there he is, 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 there he is. Oh, that's right. That's exactly what he told Abraham to do. Abraham, wink, wink. I just spoke to you. Yes. Joshua, I just parted the Jordan. Yes. Okay, stack stones. Why? Because you're going to forget that I walk with you. You're going to forget your testimony. And they're going to know me by your testimony. So stack stones called an altar of remembrance so that when you walk by it, you go, oh, yeah, that's right. That's the day God walked with me. He's with me. I'm his son. Do you have altars of remembrance? You talk about that in your family? No, Yaku, come on. I'm set free. I'm going to tell my sons. Um, it's the strongest way, Dusty, you could ever lead your son to the Lord. You say, son, let me tell you where I fell. And then let me tell you who picked me up. But dad, you're so amazing today. You're leading worship. Yes, yeah, son, that's how good he is. No, no, I want to hide that from my son. No, no, it's not what the word says. You talk about Egypt because it sets people free who are currently in Egypt. When you talk about your Egypt to somebody that you don't know in Walmart, trust me, they resonate. They hear you and they're hopeless. And here you stand with the audacity to say, I was there and now I'm here and I can't take the credit for it. There's a king that's alive today a real man sitting at the right hand of his father another real man talking to their other third party the holy spirit and they're talking about you you brother you by name do you understand that jesus would have come to this earth being born of a virgin spoken to the pharisees at seven in the temple Become a carpenter, cut half of his fingers off, bleed, ble walked, callous, faced every demon and dragon on this earth, and hung on the cross, died, gave all his blood, not one drop, all the water out of his body, oh, if it was only for you. Have you claimed him that way? Be honest. Do you talk like that in your house? Do you compete in your house? In the way of saying, he's my God. No, 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 he's mine. He, I told Dan the other day, Dan, he's mine. He died for me. Dan goes, he died for me. God is jealous for you. You know that, right? When last were you jealous for him? When last did you say, I claim him as my dad? Like a football father standing on the sun and go, that's my son. When he scored the touchdown, that's my son. I want everybody to know. That's my son. That's right. Came from these genes. That's my son. That's my son. His mom had something to do with it, but that's my son. When last did you go to the world and let me tell you about my dad. It's my dad. It's my dad. He's my father. He died on the cross for me. I want you to claim him for you, but he's mine. Every stripe all the blood, every promise, every sin broken, every promise from Abraham, Isaac to Jacob, it's mine. Fight me for it. I dare you, because here's what's going to happen. You're going to receive it for yourself also. That's your job as a Christian. Set people free. But God's the one who set people free. God is in you. The power that raised Jesus from the tomb is in you. The Jesus we serve said, go do greater works than what Jesus did on the earth. But we can't get pastors to preach acts. 
Don't tell our people to lay hands on the sick, brother. They're going to get disappointed. Shut your mouth. Get off your pulpit. Go hang drywall. Give the body of Christ the power of the Word of God. Allow them to claim the power, not to our glory. Zero. I told you, we can't tie our shoelaces. But when last did you feel empowered to say, you know what? I can lib- God's going to liberate people through me. And then your wife says, not you. I know you. You go, get behind me, woman. <laughs> God made me first. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. I'm asking you, I'm begging this well to become viciously vicious like a fighter. Viciously, dangerously in love with Jesus. Viciously, dangerously hungry every day to tell somebody about your testimony. Yaku, what if they reject me? Um, nothing's new. They rejected him. They're going to reject you. Let me just settle that score for you now. You're not doing it to be accepted. You're doing it for them. When you forgive somebody, it's not for them. You set yourself free. Because you want to go. You want to move to the next town. You take blessing to a house. God says if they don't receive it, dust your feet off. Take it again. Take it again. I want to read you something. Real quick if I can. We've got five minutes. I won't go over dusty. If I do, tackle me. <laughs> Romans 4. The promised realized through faith. This is New King James, and we can have another conversation about that. In a minute, I'll talk to you about Bible translation. We've got to take it back. For the promise to Abraham, this is verse 1. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring, which means the promise to Devon, the promise to Yaku, the promise to Dan, the promise to, by name. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that, the wor- uh, that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the Adherents of the law who are able to be heirs, faith is null and void. If you're blessed by following the rules and being good, good, and earning it, then there's no need for faith whatsoever. We go on. We're going to go to five. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over those who were sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Adam was a foreshadow of Jesus, as we un- if we understand that. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. Do you claim the gift? Do you claim the gift? Yes, there's an original sin. Yes, we're born into sin. Yes, we fall. We fall every day. And because we fall every day, there came a moment where he went and he said, Noah, come here. Yes, Lord. Most, most loyal, most faithful man ever. Listen, buddy. I'm paraphrasing. Have you ever seen rain fall from the sky? No, Lord. Water comes out of the ground. Okay, well, I'm going to make it flood. And water's going to come from everywhere. It's going to come from above, from below. But don't tell anybody. Just go build a boat. But a big boat. He builds the boat. Why? Because God had had enough. They're not claiming who I say they are. They choose a different identity. So we understand. There goes the flood. There comes the rainbow. Beautiful. And then LBGTQ hijacked the rainbow as if they could steal the rainbow from God. No, you can't. It's a promise. I see a rainbow go, yep. God promised never again by water, next time by fire. And you want to talk to me about global warming. It's going to get hot. It's going to burn. 
Have you claimed the promise? They don't claim it again. Moses has to stand on a mountain and say, God, please don't kill all of them. I know they made a golden calf, but there's a hundred, there's ten. If there's one, God says, okay, I won't kill them all. We're there right now. Lord, please save our nation. Lord, please protect our nation. And that's not for a political party. It's for the sake of the people. Please save our nation. And I believe God says, yes, my people are crying out. We're seeing repentance in this land. But now what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Then we fast forward. And he said, okay, this time I now understand that man's never going to turn the corner. They're never going to live up to the law. I'm half Jewish. My grandmother escaped the Holocaust in a wheelbarrow, okay? I've got Jewish brothers that can't eat a meal without going through a 45-minute ritual of washing their hands. They can't eat cheese and meat in the same meal because you can't have dairy. And it's like, guys, this is too much work. I'm too hungry. (laughs) And I like food too much, they'll tell you. I want to eat cheese and chocolate and steak and pie all in one meal. You can't. So God goes, they'll never fulfill the law So I'm going to bring the last lamb. And it's always been by blood. The Orthodox Jews today, they can't eat without blood. There's always sacrifice. I'm going to bring the last lamb. It's my son. I'm going to slay my son. So you don't have to sacrifice. So you don't have to earn it. I'm going to once and for all come fulfill the law. And bring a higher overarching law saying, now redeemed by grace, saved by grace, by his blood, forever. Will you claim it? Will you walk it out? Will you grant yourself the mercy and grace God gave you this morning? Or will you stay in bondage because of your root lie? Your root lie meaning, I'm not wanted. I'm on my own. I'm a scrapper. I got to fight for everything I've got. No one's for me. My dad abandoned me. I was raised without a dad. It took me two decades to get that root lie out of my life. I'd argue I became a professional athlete only to have a father. The coaches became my dads. I didn't even care about winning. I just needed the coach to be happy. Throw me a thumbs up, that attaboy pat on the backside, which women will never understand. But no, we're not weird. It actually means something to us. What's the root lie in your life? Go ask him today. God, what lie am I believing? What lie am I believing? I'll ask Pastor Jared, what's the root lie in your life? Me. Ask him. He'll show you. Give it to him. See it crucified on the cross. Claim his blood over it. Let him redeem it. Let him set you free from it so you can move on Move faster to go share your testimony that you've been set free. His word says that when you open your mouth, he'll fill it, which means scripture will come out of your mouth in the heat of the moment that you did not memorize. You'll say things to people and you go, what in the world was that? I don't even know where that is in the Bible. And then you research it and you go, it's in the Bible. Who did that? He's in you. The day you were washed, and if you've not yet been, then today's the day we can do it. He engraved the Word of God on your heart. And what the heart's filled with, the mouth will run over with. But you can't make agreement with the root lie, and you can't listen to the call of Egypt. You can't. And fear is a call of Egypt. Hear me today. You understand fear is a spirit. You have to make agreement with spirits. Fear is not real. Fear is not real. Danger is real. An active shooter walking into a building, that's real. That's danger. But fear is a spirit that calls you, knocks, and you make agreement with the spirit. So you need to go break the spirit of fear. Nail it to the cross. And say, Lord, take this spirit of fear from me. Because fear is a call from Egypt. It's a false sense of security. It's not real. So go share your testimony with everybody. Let them call you crazy. It's okay, they call them crazy too. 
But I'm telling you, this town, the neighboring town, we've got, a, we've got a incumbent and transitional police chief in the room here today. They'll see crime go down. They'll see marriages restored. They'll see domestic violence rates go down here. And money doesn't fix domestic violence, by the way, okay? No, the love of money is the root of all evil, so definitely don't think that's going to solve a problem. It's time that you claim the kingdom, that you claim him as your Christ. He's yours. He's yours personally. He died on the cross for you. Maybe for your neighbor, if your neighbor receives him. He definitely did for your neighbor, but your neighbor may not receive him. But for you, claim him. Talk about this well. He's the water. Tell them, hey, there's a way. There's a way. He's going to call you out of Egypt. Just tell them your story. Talk about when some disease came into your crop and you prayed and somehow miraculously you still made it through that year. Make it real. That's what Jesus did. He stood with farmers and he said, hey, if I throw seed on the rock, what would happen? And they go, you didn't have to be a believer. You go, the birds are going to eat it. He's like, yeah, that's right. That's right. And if I plant it shallow, ah, it's going to shoot up fast and die. The sun's going to burn up. Talk to people about things that's relative to them. And work your testimony into it. And watch them change. Watch him change people. And you go, oh God. I can't even claim credit for that because I didn't do anything. I was just sharing my brokenness. And he moved. Can I pray that over you? If you've never accepted Christ into your life, and I, don't, I didn't ask Jared and Dusty, you can reprimand me. I don't know how you guys do it here. But if you've never accepted Christ into your life, really, for the young ones, today's your day. Today's a moment. Today's a marker. Today, today, when you accept Christ publicly, you plant a stake in the ground and you shout to the demons and to Satan. You say, I now pick the team. I'm now wearing that mark, the blood of Christ. I'm now lo no longer for sale. I'm no longer up for grabs. I'm course correcting my life. All powers and principalities hear it. If you've never done that, you've just always been the kid that I believe God's real. I believe in Jesus. But you've never died to Egypt, to yourself, to be resurrected in Christ, then today, do it today. Maybe when we adjourn after you come up, Dusty, and sing, just anybody, anybody that's hungry to say, I want more. Even if you've been saved, just go, I want more. Let's gather here. I'm not in a rush. I've got a date with my three-year-old at 4 p.m. So I'll be back in Dallas by then. But I'm not in a rush. We'll meet here, and we'll love on you. And we'll go to the throne together. And we'll go nail a couple things to the cross. We'll walk out of here today free, light. To go mobilize and go to war out there. Do it today. Let me pray that over you. Lord Father, I thank you, Jesus, that you're personal. That there's not a doctor in this city or in this nation that can tell me how many hairs are on my head, but you know. That there's nothing that happens without you knowing. That Satan can't approach us with an attack without you giving permission. Because you say my son can handle it because I've given him the tools. He knows my voice. I pray that you call us, God. Call us, God. Call us, God. Knock, Lord, in the areas of our lives where we want Egypt. Knock, Father. Call us, Lord. We surrender our, our ears, our spiritual ears, our hearts, and our minds to you. We want to hear your voice, Jesus. Call us, Lord. Call this city. Call this nation into its righteous place. Thank you, Jesus, that you're seated at the right hand of God. Thank you that you are the resurrected Christ. Thank you that you came, you paid, you died, you bled. We claim your blood. We claim your body as ours. It means something, Lord. We hail you as king. You're the Messiah. You're Rapha the healer. You're Nisi. You are Shalom. You're agape love. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We surrender our day to you today. We've got today. Show us, Jesus, Holy Spirit, show us how to lead them by our testimony. I pray, Father, that you liberate this city, that you set people free. I speak a blessing and an anointing over these families. I plead the blood of Jesus over these families. You will hear the voice of God. 
You will walk differently. You will talk differently. He will change your countenance. A light will shine on your house in your neighborhood. Angels will surround you and your vehicles, your livestock, your property, your talents and your gifts. That which God's placed in your heart, He will nurture it. He will water it. Chase after Him. We will chase after you, God, with a passion, viciously in love with you, Jesus. More of you in this nation. We pray for our nation. We pray for leadership. And we pray, Father, that we get our minds right. Not look at Egypt, but look at you. Look at the cross and say, forward with the kingdom. Forward with the word of God. I pray that you breathe on dry bones, Lord, and raise an army in this city, in this town. I pray a blessing over Pastor Jared as he's traveling, as he's coming back. Dusty and the worship team, we celebrate you as our king. Satan, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you, 18 strong men. I'm speaking to your powers and principalities. I'm speaking to the demons. We belong to Jesus Christ. End of story. And we're coming for you. We're coming for you. We're going to hunt you in people's lives. We're going to help people see that they made agreement with Egypt and turn them the other way. Holy Spirit, you move. You're the power. You're the one. If you just touch them, Father, you said, Lord, if they drink from you, they'll never thirst again. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. If we take them to water, they will know it's different. It's to your glory. It's by grace that we're saved and set free. We claim you as our own, our own, Lord, as we fight for children against sex trafficking, as we fight against sexual immorality, as we fight it against infidelity, problems in marriage, thoughts of suicide, thoughts of depression, alcoholism, drug addiction, sexual por uh, fornication, Father. All the snares of Satan, and we say it is nothing in the kingdom of God. I pray that you set people free in this room today. Set them free in Jesus. Set them free, Lord. Touch their lives. For those who've never accepted you, Lord, call them forth. Call them, God. Today, show us how to be brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you our marriages. We give you our talents. We give you our businesses. We give you our finance. We give you our dreams and our hopes. We give you our children. We give you our children. We give you our children. Thank you that you speak to them. Out of the mouths of babes, Lord, speak, Father. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Prophesy, Jesus. Prophesy, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.